Welcome to Ogbang's Adventures. This is episode one of my hard suit campaign. Got with us some players diving into this new world, unexplored. Nobody knows what's going on. And that is intentional. So here we are. We find ourselves in the middle of an ocean. Currently, all of you are inside of these glass tubes, these pods. And inside of them, you're dreaming. And you're in a suspended animation. And you're having these dreams, but they're not quite nightmares. And some of you are feeling like a cold campfire or a silent wind. Snow without the crispy cold. Perhaps a netherworld of the mind. That netherworld is all you remember as your sleep pod hisses open. Your body is stiff. You're nauseous. You feel lost and mostly blind. You have a splitting headache and you're newborn and old as the dirt all at once. You're thirsty, afraid, pale as a ghost. Welcome to your new life. Whoever you are, whoever you were, this is now. You find yourselves in a musty, dim cargo hold of some aged wooden ship. The crashing waves and creaking timbers are muffled outside, forming a ghostly concerto with the clinking of bottles and straining of rope within. More pods are at your sides, each beginning to open slowly. How did you get here? How long have you been asleep? No answers come. The memories simply don't appear. But you feel a fire in your heart a sense of purpose, or some unfilled promise. Reluctantly, your limbs obey you, and you take a step forward. Felix, what do you do? I would hold my hands up in front of my face, first the palms and then the back, and just look down, try and find a reflective surface just to try and I suppose turn around into the, the, the now open sleep pod and see if I can see my reflection, see if I recognize who's looking back. And as you do this, a strange visage, it's warped from the bent light that's cast inside of this room. And you stare into this and you're not quite sure what you're looking at. But what you see is a turtle of sorts. What do you do? Um, look around, see if any of the other pods are opening, see if anyone else needs help. They are, and as you take your first step, you stumble forward, and immediately a flash pops into your mind. And you see, when you're looking into your reflection as you're moving past to get to... Ooh. that you're not just any, Torton. You're a kid. You're small. Little. How old are you? It's hard to tell, but from the feel of me, the, the way I'm unsure of my limbs, probably just verging on adolescence. Sure. And for a Torton, how old do you think that would be in human years? Early 30s. As you keep continuing walking forward, um, you take another step, and this one, immediately you get a pang in your brain. This sort of flashes memory, and you see a lovely face. You can't quite make out, but tell me, what do you think this face looks like? It's um, maternal. It's as maternal as a turtle's face can be. It's just, it, it starts off out of focus. And then slowly gets sharper and sharper and just smiles in recognition. Then you hear the laugh of children. And behind that laughter, you start to hear a slow rumble. And in this waking dream that you're having, you see a wall of fire. What does it do? Um, it starts closing in and 
just overtaking the background of anything that I'm seeing, just engulfing everything. And the, just the roar of the fire goes up as the laughter kind of fades away, as if it's burning the sound away from the very air. Perfect. Now you look down at your hands, and when you do, you can feel something, the hum of the ship, and as you get close to this technology and you move your character down into one of these pods that's opening, you can feel that you are acutely aware of all magnetic fields and their sources, and you can feel that there is a magnetic field that has just dissipated around these pods as the next one opens. And when it does, so Wait, Fuser, tell me what happens. You come down, you see this turtle man standing before you. The first thing you see is what? I'm looking for a reflective surface, yeah. And uh, I'm also looking for anyone, any person that I can talk to. Okay. Well, you see Lumina Distance, your eyes are you're basically blinded at this point as you're sort of rubbing this stasis sleep out of your eyes. And in front of you, as the glass is coming in, you do catch a glimpse off the metal as this thing raises up. And when it does, you see an elf. Who? Not just any elf, though. The elf that you see is massive. Very unconventional for an elf. So the same thing. So now you see this giant turtle man in front of you. What do you do? Who, who, who are you? And who am I? I, I just... I, say, I, 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 I just woke up. I don't know the... Can you remember anything? Do you know why we're here? I have no idea. I was hoping that you would tell me. Is, is anyone else here? And you, as you say that, another pod next to you also hisses open. And you see another figure in there. Let's go to Dry Scythe. As the pod opens, smoke comes out. And you can see in the haze there's two silhouettes. One of a small turtle child. Another one, a huge hulking elf. In front of you, these two hazy figures and silhouettes. And as the door is opening, once again, you catch that glean of metal and you're able to see your reflection standing in front of you. And when you do, you see a really haggard looking dwarf with a really botched haircut. And these two other players are in front of you. These creatures. As the others, as you are staring at him, you all see that he has a scar across his face and one across his neck. And just as you're sort of rubbing this sort of stasis sleep out of your eyes, Dry Scythe, you will have a flash in your mind as well. Now this one is a vast scene in front of you, a vista. And what you see is cosmic gas. Wheels. And this, as the smoke dissipates in this cosmic realm, there's a baffling object in front of you. What does it look like? Uh, it looks like a star. What's it made out of? Brilliant shining star made out of... Uh, does it have to be a material? Can I say it's made out of, like, radiating energy, just pure energy. That's what it is. Welcome to Hard Suit. Radiating energy. Hell yeah. And you look down at your hands, and when you go to sort of steady yourself to get out of here, a blast of this sort of nitrous air, and the rest of you sort of step back from this cold air, but not you, Dry say. You're devoid of this sensitivity to cold. You don't feel it at all. A fuser, as you see that, and you see the, him not reacting to the cold that you are, you remember something as well. Uh, two things. You also remember a lovely face. What face do you see? Uh, an old elf face. Old elf face. And once again, similar, you hear laughs of children. And then that rumbling in the distance as a wall of fire. Where's the fire moving? What's it doing? Fire is burning and I think I can hear some muffled screams. 
but for some reason I'm unable to do anything. Now, as you see that vision, it snaps, you snap back here with the rest of us. You immediately feel a sensation, which is odd because as that fire was happening, a odd sensation sort of takes over you and you feel that you crave fire, that you crave sunlight. And you know, without a doubt, that you thrive in intense heat. Now, just as you guys are contemplating all of this, the ship rocks, and you feel the storm outside brewing harder. And when it does, and we're going to roll for this, we roll a d4. Three. You get a sensation that in three rounds, this ship and something devastating is going to happen. And as a ship sort of moves and rocks, sways immediately, Solomon, you and the others start colliding into each other towards the back of this. As you do, um, you find yourselves in front of a series of lockers. Solomon, when you look at this locker, you immediately see something on it. You see a name, and it's very familiar to you. The name Felix Bracas enters your mind, as well as the number on the locker, which is five. What do you do? I just instinctively just open it. You do. And inside, you see four items hanging inside. You see an exosuit. You see something called, and you know this, called a variscope, a burst pistol, and a memento morti, which is a plaque from a funeral. And these items will be on your sheet, so you don't have to worry about writing them down, but they're there. Okay. All right. Fuser, as you fall yeah. into this and you bump into the others, you see a locker as well. And the name stands out to you immediately of Vashnar Knox. And the number on the locker is one. What do you do? Well, I will try to open it as well. When you do that, your locker does not open. Oops. How do you wish to proceed? Can I break it? How do you want to break it? Tell me. It's my great hands. Okay. So you're going to bring your hands down on this thing? Yeah. Okay. Roll me a d20. Yeah. Oh, 12. Perfect. Yes. So with that, your hand comes down, and you put a sizable dent in this thing. But you actually notice as if this is something you've done before. Perhaps your locker has always gotten stuck, and this is just how you open it. And when you slam this fist into this sort of groove that you've worn out many from many times before, inside of it, you find what you know as a Durafab outfit, a fast medical kit, a thumper pistol, and a strange stash of stolen items. And inside of it, there's a key, a tiny statue, and a platinum signet. Give yourself plus one strength. Or slamming that hand on that locker and opening it up. You just gained a stat. And we are revealing our characters as we play. So now you have plus one strength to your character. That is your first of three that you'll gain. Right. And, and lastly, we've got Dry Scythe coming up here. You slam into this big hulking brute. How tall are you, Dry Scythe, for a dwarf? Four, six? Sure. Four, six. You slam into this hulking elf before you. And same thing, you see a locker. But the last name is missing. Scratched out or maybe never put in there. You can't tell. And the word Galileo and the number three. What do you do? Well, I, uh, I uh, put my hand on the scratched out last name and I was with Galileo as I uh, tried to rattle it open. When you say the word Galileo, the number three flashes and glows. And then a 
thin blue line of energy starts from the top and traces out the door, makes a full circuit, and then yours opens. And when it does, inside you find a nano skin, a nomad's bag, a VM compound bow, and a cryptic artifact. It's a fist sized object of weird material and odd markings. So, again, this is uh, this is rocking, so that it's going to be one whole turn there. Alright, so we are down to two. On your second turn, as you guys are sort of navigating this space, you do see some objects. And there, basically, there is a, uh, a, a... Upon opening that last locker, the floor in front of you starts to... Uh, a line of light sort of traces down here. And it starts to point... And then you see the numbers. The first one is three. Then there's another one slides over here and a door illuminates. And you see the number one. And then the line continues and over here, five. What do you do? Start back at the top. Oh, go to five. All right, Felix, move yourself to position five. It would be this uh, sort of room, yeah. So, as soon as you walk up to it, you see a very strange sight, but it does seem familiar to you. And when you do, there is a hard suit in this room. Now, this one is contoured. Organic. It stands in the middle of this room. Near this bed. And uh, inside of this thing, it's basically placed... It looks like it's just being held by some ropes. And it's contoured organic. It has an anthropod-like shape. Organic. Smooth. And you can tell just by looking at it, the frame is high-grade quality. That this suit has been modified in some way. It has two properties. You also notice that the legs are treads. Low-geared tracks used for dozing. The right arm is a drill. The left arm, a particle gun. And on the chest is a particle attractor. What do you do? Um, I'll just approach it and seeing how it looks organic, just kind of trusting, and uh, kind of place my hands on it and just look down, slowly down the front to see if it responds to my touch. What would you like to use to investigate this? Um, it's okay. It's not. It's not a machine, so no. I'm not going to try and work it out. There's no it's gears. A, there's it, nothing. It's, it's it's organic, so I'm going to mm-hmm. try and feel it. So I imagine it. Okay. Wisdom, just kind of feel. Sure. Try and understand it on a just a bi- biological level. Mm-hmm. All right. Roll wisdom. Target is 12. Oh. A 6. No. With that, you are clumsily sort of uh, running your hands around the surface of this thing, and you can't find any particular way. You're not sure that's actually how it opens at all. So that will be your one action and your move. Now we're going to go to I'm gonna continue down the line here. Galileo. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, move into this room where I guess I'm at the door. Yeah, you're at the door. And as soon as you drop into that room, you see one as well. And this one is also contoured and organic, but different. And this one has... Uh, what you see is a frame. It's uh, It seems like it's been modified as well. It's a little bit more sleek. And it has uh, particular properties that you know are called halo and decoy. But we'll have to experiment and see how that works out. It also has push treads for legs instead of the conventional uh, conventional feet. Right arm is a shell pistol. Left arm is a manipulator hand. The chest, you know, has a self-repair unit. What do you do? All of these things flood into my head. I uh, I barely even understand what where, where are these words coming from. These are all just thoughts that you know. These are memorized, and they're just sort of pushing themselves to the surface. There's something about yeah. seeing this hard suit is just like reigniting everything about this. Like I, I come forward and I, you know, 
sort of similar to how I touched my scratched out name before I am touching this hard suit like do I uh, is this mine you know are you something to tell me what I am you know I'm like touching the hood or the face sure well tell me how you would want to interact with this hard suit what are you trying to do and then give me a reason and an explanation or a stat that you want to use in order to work with the suit uh, I guess uh, I'm just trying to tr- reignite, like you know, you know the scene of a person touching an object from a long time ago, and it gives them flashbacks to the sure. type of person they used to be. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to oh, see fun. if I can regain some of what I used to be. Sure. So, what I would you like to? What would you like to roll? Then you can roll int wisdom. That sounds probably, like probably wisdom. Okay. So good. Roll wisdom. Target twelve. 16. 16. Okay. So, with a 16, you are definitely able to see it. And you, uh, so yes. So, as you approach with this with wisdom, tell me how this suit opens for you. Oh, uh, perhaps, I guess the, the, since it's a very sleek design, you know, perhaps the front view of it sort of just, uh, dissipates almost like, uh, you know, like, shattering glass or burning paper yeah like a burning paper Ooh, it like just that. sort of like opens up and then you know shows me its insides nice yes so exactly that so as soon as you do this and how did you activate again use your hands or what did you do to touch yeah, it I, just, I, I put my hands on the face of it hands on the face sure yep so on the body so uh as you sort of wave your hand around this thing it, it immediately recognizes you and it opens itself up, and inside of it, you can see, I mean, this suit, by the way, these are huge suits. So this suit uh, alone, yours is about, we would say, a good 10 feet. It's a 10-foot tall suit. Um, The arms are low, sort of hanging to the ground, and as soon as you look at this thing, you can see the cockpit opens up, what would be an internal, but it's it's almost like the organic surface is smooth in here, and you can almost see there's some pulsating objects inside and within, but there are no controls. There's no buttons. There's nothing here that would signify that this is some kind of mechanical device. You can only sort of gather it on the inside of this. It, it feels very organic, and you know, uh, perhaps this is a more uh, of a recent model compared to the other ones that you have. You would know about. What do you do? Take one more action. And we'll pass it. Uh, let me get inside it. Okay. You get inside of it. And then that's what will end your turn. So you're currently inside of this thing. Yeah. And it's uh it's definitely cramped in this space, for sure. Alright. And for a door, like Yeah. For, no, the the suit is huge. You're fine, you're inside of it, fine. It's that the suit takes up the majority of this room, so I should have probably scaled it more appropriately just to give you an idea. They are big. Oh, I thought you said I was cramped in the suit. Oh no no. Suit. It's a suit, yeah. This is actually they're pretty big, yeah. To give you an idea of the size and scaling of where you guys are and what these look like. Does that make sense? We're more like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're like that. Those are huge. They're big boys. That's for sure. Yep. Okay, and then let's go to Fuser. So we're going to kind of fast forward your character. So you're currently inside of it. That's cool. Look at that. And then uh, Fuser, you're over here. And you see one as well. And this uh, one... Wait. Huh? Why is, my, why is my token small? I did that. To reflect the sides of the characters and how big they are. Yeah, but he should, he should be bigger than the door. Oh, that's right. You're. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why is he so big? Get out of here. You look like a little kid. <laughs> that seems about accurate. All right. And this one <laughs> is uh, different. You see a suit, which is much more. It looks a little bit more uh, vicious. This one is covered in spikes, blades, drills, and it has claws. And the frame has two properties. You know them as overloader and recovery. It has quad legs, four total legs. The right arm is a shell pistol, and it also splits at the elbow, and it has a particle gun as well. The left arm is a missile box. The chest, you know, has a self repair unit. What do you do? Uh, I will try to pick it up, actually, with my both hands to have a better look at it. You're going to pick up this robot? And, uh, this, uh, sorry, this hard suit? I mean, 
I'm not exactly able to lift it up, but my motion is exactly like that. So I'm uh, holding on to it with my both hands okay. and uh, trying to find anything. Basically, I'm trying to remember if I can remember anything. Sure. And they're like lifting the hood of the car. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, yours is not organic like the others for sure. So what do you, how do you want to do that? Uh, I mean, I'm basically looking at uh, around it, like every aspect of it, every part of it, while holding it. Sure, but so, tell me a stat. So, what do you want to use to do that? Uh, I. It can be anything. Could, it could be anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be wisdom or it. You could say, "I want to use dexterity to do something." I want to use whatever. It's up to you. You decide. Our stats are built actually, by your choices. Actually, I will use dexterity because in my mind, I'm trying to find an opening or a button or anything, so I'm hard pressing around it. Sure. Okay. So roll me, uh, give me a d20, and target number is 12. Yeah, I had a 12. 12. Wait, Perfect. 12. Yep. yep. So you just barely get there with these big, gnarled hands of yours, calloused fingers. Tell me how and where you sort of work this in order to open this up dexterously. How does a suit open? This is something you'll need to note. So something around chest, like uh, I was able to, with my hands, I was able to find an opening, like a door that's stuck, and you enter your hands and just open it. But uh, just there was a little opening there, and I pressed it, and it automatically opened. Cool. All right. So remember, and that's what the, that's what you know from now. So that's how your suit activates when you're trying to get inside. Um, and yours being yeah. the the you know a bigger frame yourself, your suit is also you know compensated for that. So you have a good like seventeen foot tall suit, for sure. This thing is cramped and hunched. It's currently sitting on the floor. This thing is huge. Make yours actually reflect that too, just to show the size difference. Okay. All right. And with that, there's one turn, and you guys can feel this. The ocean outside, the waves are swelling. Thunder is cracking. All around you, you can hear the water actually coming in. And as you look up, you can see this stuff. So, Felix, um, as you were sort of trying to figure out what's going on with this suit, uh, the beams on top of the uh, the plank above you, where this sort of suit is being held, one of them comes loose from the uh, what you think is going on outside. You hear a crack of the thunder and the lightning, and above you, you hear a large wooden object sort of slam down on top. And when it does, the water starts pouring in right on top of your suit. And this beam also comes straight through and it's headed towards you. What do you do? Um, I'm, so I'm a kid. I'm frustrated. The, I'm trying to use this thing and it's not working and time is ticking. I'm trying not to panic. Um, so I take a deep breath and I essentially Hook as much into a ball as I can and try and shoulder barge through back towards the suit because I'm I'm stubborn. I'm not giving up. Awesome. So what do you want to roll? This plank is coming right towards your face. This giant, big mast is snapped in half is coming right at you like a a battering ram, ready to destroy a turtle. What do you do? I'll roll constitution. I'll try and you brace yourself I'm, for it. I'm gonna brace myself. I'm gonna use my shell. Okay. I mean that's what it's for. I'm gonna. Go for it. As yeah. much as I, can. I love it. So you sort of turn around, you're spinning, and you're like ducking down. Is that what's happening? Yeah, kind of like a. Or do you go inside almost, the shell? Like crouch, took my left arm into the shell and put the the it forward towards the thing and just push, and charge into this beam. If the beam's coming at me, I'm going to try and hit the beam. Perfect. All right. Now remember, um, when you do that, you feel the grit inside of you sort of kind of coming in there. So if you, oh, you don't need it. But you you did feel like you could use grit on that. So with a 15, yeah, this thing, the beam comes in and it just bounces right off your shell. You just move back a couple of inches, but you hold steady. Give yourself plus one con for that. Okay. Infuser, you had the plus one strength. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll give you another action with that. What else did you want to do, Felix? You haven't moved yet. Um, I'm, I know that times are. I mean, water's coming on board, so yep. I'm gonna just try and calm myself down, take a deep breath, just start repeating. I'm Felix. I'm Felix. I'm Felix. 
just try again, just to try and connect with this machine. Mm -hmm. Now, as you do that, that magnetic field around you, um, you can feel that there's something sort of uh, happening around the this hard suit. Where do you feel the magnetic source on the hard suit? Um, I think it's strumming from the just right in the center of. You can see on the, I mean, on the token, uh, the front is it's like a mix between pods and teeth. Mm -hmm. It's almost like there's a gap between those teeth, and it's just emanating out. Nice. So you do that, and I'll give you one more chance to roll. Now this one's going to be hard. Okay. But you have that grit if you wanted to use it. You can use it after you roll as well to add. Yeah, I'm going to use it. Whoo. All right. Ooh, oh, 15. 15. Nicely done. So with a 15, you are able to very quickly... Well, you tell me. How do you get inside this suit? Um, I think I like pushing my hands towards it and but feeling this magnetic field mm -hmm. just kind of almost just concentrate and just try and pull on that magnetic field almost as if it like not reaching with my body but just reaching with that sense of magnetism just trying to, to urge it open mm -hmm. and it does i mean it opens right in front of you and you have a chance if you want to jump inside of it speed of time uh yeah yeah i think that's wise all right, there it is. Nicely done. All right, Galileo, what do you do? Well, uh, I see that this suit will have a hard time fitting in through this little door here. You know, so I, I guess I'm like moving around in this thing, and you know, perhaps I see that on one hand I have some sort of gun-shaped object. Maybe I'm going to try to fire that. How do you fire it? What do you do? Um, You're inside of a suit, so we, we're developing how this suit works, and each suit is unique into itself. So, what um, do you have to do to get your suit to fire? Uh, do you mean like roll wise? No. Yeah. What what stat is used? You're inside of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would probably say that he, I might get. Galileo's gonna aim his gun kind of like at the doorway. Is there anything you want to uh, retcon, Felix? Because I could have suggested that for you too. I mean, I'm in my suit. I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I have a 13 total. All right. 13 total, and the target was 12. Yep. So you're inside of it. So you used, correct me, you said it was dex? Yes. All right. So give yourself plus one dex on your sheet. And with dexterity, you are able to somehow, you tell me, what did you do with Dex in order to get this thing to fire? How does it fire? Um, uh, I mean, I guess I'm pressing buttons. There's no buttons. It's, it's a smooth surface. Yeah. Oh, okay. So do you, you you're um, basically describing like, do you slip your hand into a thing or is there some kind of like, what is the motion or what has to occur for you to do this? You use dexterity to do this. I, uh, I would say that you said this was a very high-tech model. Yeah, it's like a newer so version. Yours perhaps is, once what? I get inside, you know, there are things that link to my hands, my head, my spine type of thing. Mm -hmm. So my suit is being controlled with a mere thought. Like, my body cannot move, but the suit is moving when I'm thinking of moving my body. And as you do, the waves are crashing down around you. The rocks are headed forward. You can see in front of you, this um, what looks like these cliffs that are coming at you, looming. The boat is moving faster and faster. Lightning cracks all over the place. Some of the boat has caught fire from the lightning strikes. And this thing is moving, and it's headed towards the shore. What do you do with these suits? Uh, so when you said uh, we left it up, so... Yeah, you've uh, entered through these grates. They're sort of like uh, piston-powered grates that have dropped you up on top of this. Can we move forward with while lifting up or anything like that? You can try. How do you move? Uh, I mean, go up and as I said, so for me, I'm just using my hands and my feet to give up a, a motion of movement mm -hmm. from my body and that should translate in the suit. Okay. 
So suits require power, and uh, the power in your suit right now is out of essentially a hundred, right? So it's a D100. There's a percentage. So every time you do an action, you are eating 10% of that suit's energy. So first we're going to do is we're going to roll and see how much power your suit actually has in it. So Ooh, roll me okay. a D100, and that's how much power your suit starts with. So just be, uh, yeah, if you just roll 2d10, that should equal the 100. Is day, well, there's yes. day 100 at the bottom. There is, a, yeah, okay. Yeah, there, yeah, Do yeah. that. Yeah, I delete. That, del so. Oh, you did, okay. So you have 40%, note that in your book. Your suit has 40% power, and that's it. Uh, yeah, so I guess I can use 10% uh, of my power to glide myself towards the shore. Sure. Leaving the ship. So you're gonna. I mean, right now you're headed towards the rocks. What do you want to do? Go to the prow and then jump off, or what are you? What are you doing? I will start running and I will just yell at my party. We need to get off the ship, and I will start running. And then, when I reach at the prow, I will lift up and then move forward. Okay, you do it. So you go to the front here. You're on top of this thing. Oh, I got a turtle there. Oops, wrong guy. Sorry. <laughs> Just, I'm that's a good not kid. you. I just that's not told. you. Yeah, he's like, okay. Nope, not <laughs> you. Not you. All right, sorry. If you could put that back for me. Yes. So you go to the front. Your suit goes. You go with it. All right. You find yourself in front of this prow. All right. And you want to yeah, jump so off? You said into the water. No, 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 no. I said I would lift up uh -huh. and then try to move a bit. Lift up and move forward. Okay. You have four legs. Now these quad legs allow you to use any surface is walkable, even inverted. So if you wanted to, you could be upside down on this. So explain your action. So right now the water is pretty deep. I mean, you're, you're getting closer to the shoreline. You're definitely going to hit this beach and these rocks. And you want to do what? So tell me how you do. The water below you is hundreds of feet deep. But slowly getting more shallow. Oh. As I said, like, I'm just trying to lift myself up and then, like, while in the air, move forward to, towards the shore. Okay, but when you say lift yourself up, what do you mean? You're with your hands? Or, I mean, you have four legs, but how are you lifting? That's where I'm confused. Oh, so I'm confused because how did I lift up myself to come up to the, to come up to this deck? Oh, you rode the elevator, essentially, with Felix. Felix has, all of you did, Ooh. underneath of your, yeah, underneath of all of the suits was a platform, and it's hydraulic powered. So, when oh, oh, when oh, he sorry. activated it, that you took the elevator up with him, and that's why you guys are here. Oh, I had that image in my mind. Iron Man levitating? That's yeah. what oh, I no, no, no levitating, no, no, no. Yeah, this is like a machine-driven thing, for sure. Uh, okay, okay. So, so you're when you say that uh, uh, my legs can walk on any surface? Any surface, even include, inverted. Does that include water? No. It says any, like, hard surface here. They didn't specify, but... <laughs> oh my god, that... You could basically walk upside down on a ceiling, or, you know, roof. So what would you like to do? So you're at the edge of this prowl, now what do you want to do? You want to jump off? You can. Go for it. No, I will stay there, and I will just yell at my party that we need to get off this ship. Okay. Let's see what they do. <laughs> yep. So, you used 10% of your power. You're now down to 30 to move there. Okay. Oh my god. It, even that move yep. cost 10%? Yep. Oh. It certainly did. Cost you power. All right. And then we're going back to... Well, that's the last turn, isn't it? That's it. I believe okay. so. So, with that, you guys crash into these rocks. The boat just comes speeding along and hits these rocks in front of you. When it does, it throws you all forward, some of you in different directions. Now, Felix, I need you to roll hard. And the target is 12. So you need a 15. That's an 8. It's not enough. That's now, an 8. As you feel this, unless somebody wants to help you out with a hero coin, you start to see your hard suit that you're inside of is rocking back and forth, this throwing you forward from the, the collision of these rocks. And it's sending you forward over the, 
the bow here. Your hard suit is about to hit the water. And oh, wait, wait, no, hero point. Okay. Back to zero point. Yeah. So you're at an eight, yeah. but you could roll the hero coin. You could add it as a d12, or you can re-roll the whole thing. I mean, I'd have to get it. You need um, a seven or higher okay. on a 12. I think it's statistically, it's the d12 has better yeah, roll the d12. Okay. Okay. Add a d12 uh, to it. You're 15. Yeah. 17. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. But, wow. Oh, it was 17. Yep, you pull yourself back in at the last minute and you're able to hold on. So somehow your suit just the tank treads, you're just sort of ripping them forward and you get enough on this slick surface of this waterlogged wood that you're able to keep yourself where it is and don't, you do not go overboard. Well done. All right, so you're holding in there, but you're crashing and then you are able to ride this thing to the shoreline instead of going deep into the ocean. So you are basically, you know, I'll keep you up here kind of sliding as this thing collides. All right. And then that'll leave us with, uh, last but not least here, we got Bashnar. Right? Sorry, no, no. Galileo. Galileo. What do you do, Galileo? Galileo. You're about uh, to collide into this thing. What's happening? Uh, Galileo is going to... Well, everyone else is moving over there, so it's just like, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, this is happening like whatever. instantaneous. Yeah, you didn't even, it's just all at the same moment. We're just breaking it down by turn. So, in that instant where they've all made that action, what are you trying to do? I'm just moving forward. Okay. Like, brace no. for impact. Okay. You wanna, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you want to brace for impact. What do you want to do? And we're all using power here, by the way. So, sorry. Um, let's go back for a second. Felix, roll me a D100. How much power did your suit have? Oh, sorry, I need to... I rolled 67. 67? Okay. But yeah, I forgot to delete the first... Yeah. We'll round up. We'll go... We'll give you... Uh, so you're at... You were at 70. You're down to 60% power now. And then... Okay. Um, dry Scythe, roll your D100. Let's see how much power you have. So Galileo's suit will have... Oh, wait. Doing? There should I'm be a D100 at the bottom here, your dice box. No, no, I was typing it into Discord by accident. Oh, no, don't do that. Yeah, use the, uh, the dice box. All right, so you're at 80, and now you're going to uh, you're going to make an action. So what are you going to do? You want to run forward? You've got these tank treads underneath of you. What is your action? What are you trying to do? Yeah, I'm moving forward. All right. I'm using the stairs. This is going to be this is going to be hard, yeah, because you've got these treads sort of you know, climbing over these things. So roll me hard. Need to be to uh, you need to hit a fifteen. Uh, okay. I oh yeah. no! It didn't oh even roll. God. Like the minute the dice hit the board, it just stopped. Yeah. Well, the dice gods are fickle. You rolled a one. So, with a one, you and your suit go overboard, and the rest of you see this. His character just plunges in there, into the water. And you guys ride to the coast as it's, you see the ship just collide in there. Falls into the rocks, and the rest of you are in the ocean, but in the shallows. And you can see behind you, Galileo in his suit. Now, Galileo, as you're, as you're driving, you're hitting the bottom of this thing, right? And they say it's about 100 feet deep. Um, you are on the bottom of the ocean right now. And the oh, rest of wow. you are headed towards the land from this collision. So you guys have crashed into this thing. The boat is behind you. It's sinking. And as it does, you see Galileo still behind. He hasn't caught up with you guys. He's hit the water. And uh, he just disappears underneath of the waves. What do you do? Let's start uh, saying from the top again. We'll go with Felix. You land onto this thing. You're colliding. Galileo, nowhere to be seen. Last falling off the ship into the water. So the... As my quick enough that as he was sinking, that I can try and it says my veriscope lets me visually tag him. Oh, yes. Let's use your abilities on here. Uh, your things. Yeah. Yes. So the so the the item that I got, the veriscope, says mm -hmm. I can visually tag a target, so the scope will see a ping for it. Sure. So kind of try and use the. I imagine it's not like glass in front of it, mm -hmm. and because of this this whole magnetism thing. Mm -hmm. Imagine that the the view that Felix gets is more like almost like a charcoal 
dark view because there's no light from inside. Yeah. I'm seeing like the outlines of everything around, and obviously if it's metallic or magnetic, that, that outline is brighter. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying. Whilst we we've moved away, so obviously Galileo's suit is getting fainter and fainter. I just want to point the veriscope there. As, as quickly as I can and just try and tag him so we don't lose him if he tries to move so I can keep a track of where he is I love it, go for it, 12 no oh no <laughs> <laughs> no veriscope oh my god yeah, so you try I to ping know. him but you don't know how to do it, yeah, what's that I, I don't know if you'll allow this what did he roll? Again. one, not one Oh, okay, never mind. That's not going to help. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, if I could, like, do an advanced turn to make it easy. Mm. No, I think you're, yeah, you're definitely underneath the water right now. They don't see you at all. The Veriscope was a good attempt, but, I mean, in your amnesiatic state, you can't remember how it works. Instead, you just kind of honk a horn and you didn't even know it existed, so. <laughs> yeah. You broke you broke it off your yeah. suit. So some kind of loud noise uh, is triggered when you do that, I will say, from the suit. And when it does, um, you can hear both of you in behind you. There is a character, a creature. You're not quite sure. You can't really make him out. I mean, he's he's up here, but he's he's calling down to you. This this character, and he's saying something. And you uh, you can't quite make out what he's saying, but he's definitely up there waving his hands frantically around, and you can see he's holding some kind of staff that's illuminated. And he's sort of waving you on the shoreline. Now you took that action, but you could still move. What else did you want to do? Um, now Galileo, just so you know, is he's probably you know, I don't know, like two hundred yards out from where you. I mean, I'm gonna move the suit as like as far down onto the the rock towards Galileo as I can. Okay. So that's going to require power to do that when you're going underneath, huh? So the waves they do get they do get rough as you kind of go out there. All right, so I'm going to say uh, you can use 10% of your power there. Puts you down to 50. Okay. Okay, so 50 will get you halfway there. Now you're currently, as you do this, you're getting you know the, the waves are starting to go above your head as well, and you want to continue, you want to push underneath the waves here. Is the water coming into the suit? No, it's airtight. Okay, then I'll keep going. Okay. And you feel the system straining as you kind of do this. You can feel the pressure of the water underneath of you, the suit itself, even though there's no there's no mechanical things that you can see, you can feel that the, the suit is sort of reacting negatively as it's sort of getting thrashed around and moving. So I'm going to roll. Nothing. But you do feel like the waves were kind of colliding into you and sort of putting a lot of stress on your suit at this point. All right, so we're going to put you sort of uh, moving over here. Get you about halfway there. All right. And uh, sort of the names are here, but we're going with uh, Vashnar. That was, was the turn order, right? So we're going, or did we do Galileo next? It was uh, Gal Galileo. It next. should be, right? Okay, sorry. So Galileo, you're currently oh. quite underneath the water there. What do you want to do? Uh, well, as an action to show my location, I would mm -hmm. like to fire uh, one of my pit, my shell pistol, into the air, like into the above me. Hopefully, maybe it might breach the surface and show them like I'm here. I'm still kicking. Okay. So uh, first of all, you know you have eighty percent power, right? It says that this does not consume power. Oh, great! Perfect. So uh, you're just trying to shoot this thing, and you're just trying to do it, but you're underneath the water. So the description of this thing, right? That's what we need to focus on here. So how does it that work for you? It's a conventional firearm that does ah, not conventional the power. I see. So it's still a firearm, so it requires... It's like a ballistic. Oh, so it's, not like, it's not like a laser thing. No. It's uh, mm -mm. bullets. It's bullets, okay, yeah. So yeah, so if you want to do something else... Like so I would say right now, just seeing around you, there's you know basically rocks and stones everywhere. You're finding it hard to get traction, um, but if you consume more power, you can probably get more traction if you wanted to try that. But it's going to take quite a bit. I question. This says 
push treads, mm -hmm. low gear tracks for dozing. Yeah. Use no power to push. To push, yeah. That means like you can put it in like a neutral state, so somebody, if they had enough strength, can move it forward, and the wheels just move to be pushed. To move it to activate whatever the, how this organically works, you still have to use power to do that, right? So there's under power, and there's under being neutral. So like if somebody who was strong, you said, I'm going to put it in neutral, and then they pushed you, the wheels just spin. Does that make sense? So you're able to like idle as somebody kind of moves you forward. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, it's not a, it's I mean, not subverting energy. You still need energy to move your suit. Right. So um, if you want, I mean, you can still use. Like I said, you can use power for sure. Yes, I will try to move forward. Okay, so using power, we're going to figure out randomly how much it's going to require to do that. So I'm going to roll um, a d6, and that's how much power is going to be required to get you closer. And you're, I'm assuming you're heading towards Felix, as you can probably see him, it's, even though it's a little murky underneath the water. I'm just headed towards wherever I see the rocks leading up to land. Yeah. Alright, so let me clear my dice tray. Let's roll that. So this is going to be... Um, I want to roll... It's a d6, but that per, whatever comes up will be the percent of power used. Okay? 50. You want to pursue? That's what's happening. 50% power needs to be consumed if you wanted to use this thing. So 50 out of your 80. You'd be down to 30. I get to move all the way to, to, to get out of this rocks and be like on shoreline with Felix. Where right, he's like halfway through. I've got no other option, of course. Okay. Alright, and as he, you can see him kind of coming up there, Felix, you see this uh, Galileo suit and you are moving together. He meets you halfway. And his suit is now down to 30% power. All right, so that was your movement, and then you still have an action. Do you want to take one? And I think you guys are probably close enough as well that you would still uh, see that kind of light emanating I'll at just, the top here. Is this person sort of waving to you? I'll just move again. Uh, more power to do that, yeah, but now it'll be a normal 10%. All right. All right. So, yeah, let's move it again. Yeah, it'll get you to the shoreline here if you want anywhere on this. I, I kind of just move over and just like, oh, you know, as I'm passing Felix's suit, um, is there like comms in the suit? Are we able to talk nope, to each other? Nope, it's not. That's what it's, yeah, this is, there's no comms in here. There's no discernible buttons or devices. It is a completely organic interior. If you wanted to talk, you'd have to open the suit and literally shout out of it. Talking within a suit is just muffled. But never mind. <laughs> that ends for me. Okay. And then I should put us back into Vashnar. So Vashnar, you see your your uh, fellow war masters as they are getting closer to the shoreline here. What do you do? And again, you uh, see this person. He's kind of just waving, 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 frantically, pointing, maybe shouting. Too far away, I, the wind is howling. You can't hear him or the figure. I I do a sigh of relief, seeing that Galileo is back. Then I will, with the motion of my suit's hand, I will show them that this strange guy is waving at us and we should probably go there. But but I will not move. I will stand there motionless. Yeah. So if you, I mean, anytime you activate the suit for any reason, it consumes power. So do you want to open, except for like opening the hatch essentially or, you know, revealing yourself, you can use your own body to make motions and stuff if you want. But if you're going to wave the hands of the of the suit, it will come Oh, no, back. no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm using my own body. I'm yeah, that's a hard rule. Yeah, that's the one thing that we have to keep um, for sure. So you're going to... What do you want to do? You want to do you want to signal to them, but by revealing yourself? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you open this up, and as you do, the rain is kind of just, you know, battering you. You're getting soaked here. Water is getting inside the suit. Um, and you do wave to them. And the others, as you see him, what is your reaction? Let's go, Felix. What do you do? Um, I would... As, as I see him waving and pointing, I, my reaction would be just to, to look up and try and discern everything that I can from this figure. And like, like I said about the... I suppose in... My, like, under the water, is it just like the waves are starting to lap on me? 
So yeah, I would I say. The... Yeah, no, you guys are like rolling forward out of the ocean at this point. I'm going to give you that. So you're basically okay. like you've gotten, you've, you've, you know, uh, risen up out of it. You can see through the suit as clearly as possible, but it is, you know, torrentially raining here. Um, you can see the boats, you know, behind you. But I will say that as you're seeing that and you see him, you know, pointing and gesturing that a large crate sort of hits you on the side. And it's one of the wooden crates that came from the ship has washed ashore. Okay. Um, is it shattered or is it just... Stone? It looks intact, but definitely some items on the bottom uh, from a from a crack in, it, in this wooden crate have uh, been released. So you'd have to, you know, spend time to investigate it. Okay, then I would... Uh, just quickly, because the bike turn will end with that. Uh, yeah, you saw an action. You would all see this. It's happening at the same time. You all see this. Oh, okay. So, Vashnar, yeah, so you, you know, what's the action that you want to do as this sort of crate comes up and you see this figure in the rain? And I'm going to roll a die here as well to see uh, uh, what's happening. I want to I want to remain motionless for this turn precisely because I want to roll my recovery module, which allows oh. me to regain power. Very D20. nice. Yep, perfect. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that's where you're going to go with it. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> so there you are. Yeah. yeah, so you're up there. So yeah, this crate washes up there and then Felix, it's back to you and you see this crate this figure as well, but you feel like there's three rounds left as the storm is just continually just growing and growing and growing. The wind is picking up. It's getting worse. M Movement-wise, I would get the suit onto as, as high a rock as I can. Mm -hmm. So I added 16 to my power. 16. Um, yeah, just round up. Go to 20. We always okay. round up. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as you want to go, so Felix, if you wanted to use 10% power to put you probably around here on the shoreline, maybe up to this rock, actually. All right, this rock. If I can get to the rock, I'll get on the rock. I'm just very aware that tides go in and out, and I don't want mm -hmm. to kind of... Good thinking, good thinking. Yep, yeah. so you're up there for sure. And you can see this okay. figure, and I'll just kind of expand him his sight, you know, to give an idea how big he is. Um, and you can see, you know, a sort of a strange-looking person wearing this um, garb. It looks somewhere between a hat and a cloak. You're not really sure. But they are waving and stuff, and they are basically kind of signaling with their hands. They're they're showing you this sort of path. They're pointing to this area here. Okay. Um, I would... So that costs 10%. I'm, I'm noting that too, so you should be. I'm on 40 now. Yep, 40. Um, I'm on... I mean, I'm, I'm on a rock. I would open the hatch. Mm -hmm. And then, kind of, I know he's gesturing. Did, did you say yeah. he was shouting? As yeah, well? they're shouting. Yeah, and he's saying, Harry! Um, I would, I mean, the kid and the two adults that I know mm -hmm. are right behind me. So what I do is I'd probably try and look around and assess and see if, if I can work out why he's or if there are any threats. Yeah, he's pointing and he says, he says, look, look. And when you, when he says that, and because of your word, you can see that behind you, there are some objects and they are moving swiftly around. It looks like the torrent of water and there's kind of something moving around. And the first thing you see is this, you know, swirling mass of these kind of like these whirlpools that are being pulled down. But as you kind of keep staring out, you see this figure dancing on the waves and you're not quite sure what it is but it definitely looks like a female you can see the long hair and just person and it, it has silhouette of, and she uh this person is sort of dancing on the waves and it looks like they're sort of struggling and they're underneath the water as if they're basically you know they're not saying anything but you can see their hands kind of going up and down and it looks like they're panicking and, and then these I'm... whirlpools are moving around them but they're really far out there they would be I mean, almost three times the distance of where uh, Galileo was. I would try not... Obviously, I, I've moved, but mm -hmm. given that the, the hatch is now open, um, and I know it's raining, but I try and concentrate and see what I can see that figure out and see if it's someone that needs help, or and I'd strain. Sure. And because of, this, because of this sort of magnetic awareness... Mm -hmm see if that kind of pushes through any sort of obscurity. Now, with see that... See if it just helps, uh -huh. the, helps with the senses. Sure. Sort of like, not sort of like super sense, or like... Yeah. 
a devil esque, but just more help sort of define details. Mm -hmm. Well, definitely uh, when you try to use that sensation of yours, I mean, you can. The first thing you feel, of course, is your comrades, your your war master comrades, as you know that sensation, like almost like a not an echo location, but you know the sensation of it. You get that reciprocated, like okay, they are there. You know they're there. Um, as for that thing, though, you don't feel anything else in the oceans. Maybe if you rolled, you might be able to get a distance of something, but you can't quite make it out unless you were to roll hard. If that's what you wanted to use for your roll. Yeah, it, it is what I want to use for my roll. And I know what we discussed before. Mm -hmm. and, and having looked at my sheet, I think that this is something that my character would be good at because of this sense. Yeah. So your character can definitely do this, and this was your ability, right? So no. give me a holler at me with that ability. We're still learning all these together. So this was your... This is the, um, the... The only one that's on my sheet is so Keen-Eyed. Keen-Eyed, right? So yeah, ignoring detrimental effects to vision, low light, smoke glare, or camouflage. So oh, okay. I know there's yeah, like yeah, yeah. Wind, wind whipping and, and rain. Yeah. I'm hoping to try and pierce through all that. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, with all that, you definitely, so, uh, yeah, it just happens. There's nothing to roll. That's your ability. Okay. So yep. you see this uh, for sure. You're, it's Without a doubt, there is a woman on the waves, and this person is, it looks like they're drowning. Um, and they're sort of swaying back and forth, and the motion is very, like, you know, sporadic, and um, they literally, they're waving for somebody to come get them. You know, it, it looks like they're beckoning. They're trying to say, like, you know, they, they definitely are, are doing the signs for SOS, if you had ever seen it before. And you can see this figure on the thing. I mean, he looks aghast, and he's basically just kind of pointing, but he's saying, you know, he, he's, he's kind of frantically running around the top of this little goat path here. Um, he is pointing to you. He's pointing to them. He's just sort of frantically out of his mind a little bit, but he keeps saying, it's, hurry, hurry! Can I, can I try and... I, I mean, because I've not rolled, can I try and see if I can see what he, like, sort of gain insight into what he's... Sure. What well, would you he, like to roll to saying, do that? Uh, he's saying hurry, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that, I mean, the, the, the old D&D &D player in me would say it's a, a wisdom check, just trying to work out if he's saying hurry, go, mm -hmm. save her, or hurry, come, because there's something strange about this. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, let's get a. You want to do wisdom? Let's do wisdom. Could be intelligence as well. Yeah, so the target's twelve. Oh no! Just <laughs> why ruin a pattern of a night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you you definitely don't know what he's saying. Yeah, you cannot hear anything. All right, and then we'll I mean, move I'm on. A kid, uh, so I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> you just see you just see this person shouting. Uh, okay, and then we'll go to Galileo. What would you like to do? And there should be. This is still the third round here. Just, uh, no, that would brought Marcus down to two, I believe. We should be on two. I can't change that. Maybe I can. I don't know. Uh, I'm probably just going to continue to move forward. Okay. Just walk forward. You're gonna using the suit. You're not going to... You're, you're using no, the suit yeah. power? Okay. Just got to yeah, make sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you should be down to 10%? I suppose so. Yeah. So 10% will get you far. I mean, you can same thing. You'll be, you know, here at 10. But then you see these, you know, this very steep cliff up here as well. What do you want to do? Uh, I suppose, I guess I'll uh, get out of my suit because I don't think I can make it up there with the amount of power left. Okay, so if you want to take another action, you could. Uh, my other action will be a move, then. Yep, that'll get you to the top if you want. Okay. Right. And you definitely, as you get up to the top here, you see this uh, strange-looking character. Um, and uh, he's definitely saying, he's like, Hurry! Storm, it's getting worse! It's going to get really worse! You have to hurry! Come with me! Grab the others! I, I look down the cliffside that I just walked down, and I look at him, and I'm like, I'm, I'm sure the others will follow along. I, it took a while for me to get up here. He says, ah, but the way is treacherous. Uh, I, I will wait for them. Uh, I'll gladly wait. Okay. And that is, uh, 
my turn. Yeah, and from that vantage point, you definitely see everything that Felix had seen as well. You see the figure dancing on the waves. He's out there, and he says, Oh, no! He says, Hildy! Oh, Hildy! All right, we'll go to Bashar. Yeah, so first of all, I will move in the general direction. Mm -hmm. Using, Can I use 20% of my power to move further? It's 10% to move half and then another 10. So yeah, if you want it's like 10% to get basically to the top of this. If you, Oh, well, sorry, wrong guy. You, t It would take you full 20, maybe even 30 to get to the top of this cliff here from where your vantage point is. It took them all 10% so to get here. I don't want to leave my suit uh, in here because it doesn't look like a safe place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I will try to move as much as I can towards this person with my suit. Sure. Um, I mean, as soon as you stop, you're gonna have to stop at the stairs here. So you can move your token here, and then we're gonna have to do a check to get to up this goat path. Can he, can he walk on any surface, even upside oh, down? Oh, uh, yep. Never mind. Just, just go ahead. You want to use twenty percent? Get yourself right on top. Yep. Done. <laughs> Done. There's nothing. To, yep. Your suit and you. You're basically just like a all four legs. Just immediately get the traction they need. They find every possible way to get up there, and you are. You're good to go, and you see the same thing. You see this uh, this strange-looking character with wide-set eyes, and a look of worry on their face. And minus twenty for my power. And minus twenty for your power. That's right. So you should be at uh, you at 30. thirty. You're at thirty, 30. right? Yeah. Well, I had you so at thirty before, though, and you're using twenty now. Oh, Ooh, but I got. Oh, what's yeah. Up? Say again. I reach out, I have a recovery module. Oh, you did that already. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're at 30 now. Then. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, 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 yes. So, so can I still do an action? Can I move out of the suit now? It was your double, but uh, you can just open it. Yeah, after that, it's because uh, your, your action, but to keep them you know, to concise. So if you want to open it, you can just have a free action and say something or do so, something. Yeah, uh, I will open it and tell the guy, oh, why are you screaming? Why should we hurry? What's going on? The storm, it's getting worse. But my wife, Hildy, she's in the waves. I've, I've, I've tried to see if I can find a way to get her, but I saw your ship. I, 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 I need to get out of here. It's, it's, the storm is going to get worse, and who knows? The, the cave crabs might even show up. It's not safe to be out here in the storm. This is not good. I will say that, and I will try to look for his wife in the water. And um, that's my turn. The same thing. You see it. And as uh, as we sort of get to that last frame there, you see that character, and then you see the vortexes around it sort of just start swirling, and they start to dissipate. And when they do, the woman disappears beneath the waves. Oh. And you see you see this character. <laughs> he just he starts to he starts to weep. Oh, oh Hildy, not again, my sweet Hildy. Not again. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the top. Um, Felix would hop out of the suit and close it. Okay. Um, securing the knowledge that if it's this magnetic thing that opened it, mm -hmm. like Felix, it like Felix is like I'm special. Like mm -hmm. this is mine. No one else will be able to unlock it. Okay. Um, and did you say there were items scattered around that crate or not? Yeah, it was like, we'll say the crate's basically down here somewhere. And um, some things have, you know, the crate is on the ground. So you'd have to, you know, basically run down it. But I think for the sake of time, we'll just say it's sort of washed up on shore. So it's around you. If you wanted to investigate the crate, you could as one of your actions. Yep. Yep. I'll use my action to, to, to just look through and see if there's anything that I think looks, I say important, but mm -hmm. again, I'm a child, so anything that looks cool. Yeah. Well, roll me a d4, and uh, let's see what you find, and how many. Three. Three, very nice. So, with a three, uh, roll me... Let's see, actually, it's a 50-50 here, so uh, binary here. So, roll me a d6, one to three, it's A, four to six, it's going to be B. Column A, column yeah. B. Cool. Nice. Okay. So, uh, now, let's see, on a four, you're going to find three items, okay? 
first item you find is something called uh, well, I mean, I guess you would know this, but maybe you don't. So let's see. You find some objects that look like um, it's food. And uh, this food, um, it's very, it looks like it's covered in salt and it's red. And that's all you know about it. So I'm going to paste that into the Discord for you to mull over later. Oops, mull over later. Right. Wait, it's not a turnip? It's not a turnip. <laughs> Who knew, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> No, this is uh, this is not turnip yet, but there are turnips in this game. All right, so you find that one, and uh, again, you don't know much about it, and you know, other than investigating, I'm just putting it there for chat. Uh, the next thing you find is this one. Let's go to that. Is a uh, something uh, you probably would know this one. This is called break wheat, and it is a uh, sort of a bread. Now it's getting a little wet. It's out here, so you may want to, you know, tuck it into your coat or something. You said it was three, right? Yeah. It was uh, three. Uh, yeah. Okay. And the last thing you find, oops, 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 this. Oh, you find a bottle. And this bottle is a uh, dark bottle, but you can see uh, it's full. It's corked. It hasn't been opened before. Is um, it's a it's a blood wine, thick dark red wine. And it was oh, stored in a skin. Sorry, excuse me. And it's a strong drink fermented with uh, blood. Something called Otanka blood. And it's something you would recognize somehow. So these are the items. So you found these things. Okay. Okay. That was your. Uh, that was just your sort of uh, look action. You're digging and collecting. So now you have those in your inventory. What would you like to do? You could spend I'll the rest just... of your turn if you wanted to move up with these guys. That's all I did. I'll run up and join the others. Okay. L leaving my suit on the beach. Perfect. Yep. So as you do, um, all of you have now joined this character. And he says, Oh, goodness. Uh, it, I, I I, didn't know what to do. I saw the boat and I, I was out here looking for my sweet Hildy and I saw... I saw you. I surely thought you would drown. Many have drowned on these cliff sides before with these torrential downpours in this water. Please, please, it would be very unbecoming of me if I did not take you to a shelter, or uh, at least to dry off your boots and maybe get you a warm meal. Yes, we will like that. But what is this place? What do you mean, Who what is this you? place? This is Adria. Uh, my name is Mord. Do you know us? I've, I've never seen you before. By the way, you said Aldia, right? Oh, this this is Adria. Adria. I'd like to tell him uh, sorry about uh, your Hildy. Looks like she didn't make it. That's the thing, I, Hildy. Every every night I come out here, and the time may be different, but sometime in the evening, she's she's out there on the waves. Nobody believed me, but you saw it, right? Well, we did saw a woman. Not sure if it was your Hildy. It, it has to be Hildy. There's no one else. She had. Uh, we had thought her drowned many many months ago. But yet, I continually see her out here. You never tried to go after her? Oh, I've tried, but those waters and those whirlpools, they make it nearly impossible for someone like me. But I will say, you have arrived in these... Now, I, I believe they're called hard suits. And if so, this is not something you should have. This is forbidden, Atria. Should we say continue what? this in inside? Yes, please, hurry! And then as you say that, lightning cracks down. And it comes dangerously close to your suits. In fact, let's roll. Let's see how dangerous it is. Uh, I'm still inside my suit, by the way. It's 
for the first one. Yo, yeah, you're up there. Yeah, I'm rolling for all three of these here. Just trying to do it one at a time. So that was the first one. Oh, I can just re-roll, right? So, turns. Let's do that one. Pew. Second suit, and then the last one. Both. So the last two, as you guys are, I guess, closest to the water. Both of these suits, something about them, the, the magnetism, the construction, you're not sure. But the lightning strikes each of them. Galileo, when it strikes, you see something happen to the suit. You're not quite sure what just happened. But the suit, it looks like, is uh, crackling with energy. And you can see that some of the suit, it actually kind of slumps over a little bit. Felix, your suit is hit as well. And when that happens, you can see that there's a, uh, a scorch mark that kind of uh, is on the, the surface of this thing on top of it. From the lightning basically going straight through it. You don't know what that is, but something has happened to your suits. You'd have to investigate or spend time. The storm is getting worse. You can't even hear each other speak as the rain is coming down on top of you. And Mort is saying, quick, hurry! And he just starts running off. What do you do? Follow. Right. Does everybody follow? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I make make get to his house in 20% 20, 20 of my power? Um... You think it would be farther than that. He's pointing in the distance to where the home is, and it looks pretty far. Uh, you can so get yeah, most so of the I way there. You can get most of the way there for sure. I think you could basically get to the outside of where his home is. So I will I will actually use all my power to go there because my recovery module will start recharging it once when I'm out. Okay, interesting. Yep. Um, because it's motionless. So yeah, I will try to move as as close yeah. to Yeah, so you want to park it outside possible. basically and then you want to yeah. just like yeah. recover it. Okay. All right. And the rest of you are good with leaving your suits there and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've got a choice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the visibility right now is pretty rough. It's really crazy. I mean, there are like you said, there's some things, there's, you know, you have about two round, maybe one round now at this point, but there's some like, you know, tinders that kind of washed up on shore. You can see some of the broken sails, the mast of the ship. There are some, you know, there's a lot of uh, debris sort of washing up on shoreline now. But the longer you stay, the more debris will be here, but the worse the storm is getting for you. Yeah, I, I, I think I'll, um, I'll take one look back at the suit mm -hmm. and see if, see if I get into it, whether or not it's, it's damaged, okay. Yeah, you think you'd have to you'd have to get up in there and really investigate it, like to see what happened when it was struck. Okay, then knowing that the storm's coming in and being offered shelter, I'll follow Mort. Okay. All right. And with that, you head over to Mort's home. It's a far path, but you guys are able to get there. You park that suit outside. Mort says, "Hurry, come inside, quick." And you can see he does have a, a sign up here that does have a some ale on the outside. Some barrels. I mean, it's a nicely kept cabin. And he enters inside and keeps a door for you. Um, and you can see behind you, the, the rain is definitely not letting up. And you can hear the thunderstorm brewing. The wind is howling and it almost even pushes you inside of his home. And with that, you enter Mord's cabin. It's warm inside. You can feel the hearth, and it's drying off your clothes. And Mort sits down, and he begins to weep. And that's where we'll end it.